All right, doctor, thanks for coming in here. Tisha. I'm always on the chatting. You're everywhere on that social network. And one of the people that actually been in the crowdfunding from the day one, so I'm, I'm a fan. Great, great you be here. And you know, Rodney and everybody, I just, I'm just a, and we have here. So, I sit down. Uh, yeah, Charles. Charlie said, we're going to have 10 minutes for Charlie. And uh, glad you come all the way from the Boston area here. And uh, CFPA is uh, one of the frontiers on the crowdfunding. They put their necks out there, beginning with the, so they, they were one of the people actually, the, the great group. And I know a lot of people in here, a couple of people that they're members. And um, so um, Charlie was going to explain to you about the, what is they have planned for the CFPA. And uh, we got the last, you know, so it's all yours, George, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you for the good things you do. Thank you. And likewise, Sydney. Um, how do I make this show on the screen? Technology. Okay, well, we have some technology challenges. I thank Sydney for giving me this few minutes to tell you about the Crowdfunding Professional Association, which is intimately involved in everything we're talking about here today. So what is the CFPA? Um, it is the crowdfunding industry's neutral nonprofit umbrella trade organization. It has a member elected board. It has an advisory council of pioneers and luminaries from the field. It deliberately encompasses all forms of crowdfunding, from donation to rewards to securities-based. And I do want to put in a little plug, plug that when we shorthand, when we talk about securities-based here, we often slip into equity that is equally security-based. <coughs> and the motto, the mission statement of the CFPA is working for the success of every fundraiser and their supporters by providing education, resources, and assistance to all stakeholders in the crowdfunding community. Notice that we really focus on the intended beneficiaries, the entrepreneur issuers, and the supporting investors or uh, supporters. And we work with everybody in the, the field. Well, that's not really what we want. But <laughs> Not my picture. <laughs> okay, so I'll just talk to you. Okay, so I just want to give you just 30 seconds of why I am here. My background is medical and business academic. Um, I was a professor for many years in medical and business schools. Um, I've been an innovator my whole career. Um, Future deals, oh, that's better. Um, entrepreneurs, the whole economy would benefit and benefit my work um, that I do. But then there are three sort of um, 
not self-interested reasons for my being involved. First is that in the past, access to this asset class has been limited to only the very wealthiest few percent. The JOBS Act enables everybody to participate. Uh, secondly, in the past, people like me, professional investors, invest only in the few percent of highest growth enterprises. The JOBS Act, particularly through debt, will enable all kinds of worthy businesses to get funding and support. And thirdly, and this has not been generally acknowledged by the speakers today, but I am more and more impressed as time goes on by how profoundly and democratically disruptive crowdfunding is, not just in a business sense, but in a social and governmental and justice sense, because government is not working real well these days, and the business and financial structures aren't working real well for everybody. Crowdfunding has enormous potential to disrupt and change that playing field, and I personally believe that that's some of the reason for some of the resistance to crowdfunding, because it is inherently threatening a lot of the status quo. Okay, so I got involved, I was one of the founders of the CFPA and sibling organizations, but about six months ago, I managed to get the bylaws rewritten, and I became one of the new directors who were elected last fall, and I was elected president of the organization, so now I stand before you putting a lot of time and energy into this as a public service. Now, what does the CFPA do? And this is one of the crux, the crux matter of why you should all care. We continue to engage in advocacy from the global, national, state, and professional levels. I can and regularly do go to Washington and speak with legislators. I believe I had some input into Representative McHenry's uh, current suggested modifications. I've worked closely with the SEC. I personally believe they're trying to do a very good job under very challenging circumstances. I have the highest regard for them. And when the rules become operative, they will not be perfect, obviously. They won't be everything that all of us asked for, but they will be a whole lot better than what we had three years ago. And we will take significant advantage from that, as well as continue to work for their improvement. We conduct events and education all over the world, internationally to locally. Uh, Sydney has invited me to several of his events. Um, next week, I'll be speaking in front of three to 4,000 entrepreneurs in Miami, as two examples. We operate a, or are putting together a resource directory of services offered by our organizational members and sponsors in the CFPA. So if you want to spread what you do and make it um, known to be taken advantage of by the whole world of crowdfunding, you should join the CFPA as a professional, or excuse me, as a corporate member or a sponsor. These resources are made known to everybody who looks at our website, but only the offerings of our members are included in the list. We are preparing recommended deal terms and legislative templates. The legislative templates were mentioned by Brian Korn, one of my fellow directors. The recommended deal terms are really important because all sorts of deal structures are legal, and I know as a professional investor that some of them are so bad that I wouldn't touch one with a 10-foot pole. Most crowdfunding investors don't have that experience and sophistication, so we are preparing a list uh, and some template documents of some of the deal terms that should be in every single crowdfunding transaction. Otherwise, buyer beware, you shouldn't really consider it. Uh, we're offering third-party review and correction and question um, resources for education programs. Lots of educational programs are available and becoming offered. They all have merit. They're all offered by um, competent people, I'm being generous here, but they don't do all the same things and we're trying to increase the clarity about that. We have a members communication and collaboration channel where every member of the organization can communicate with every other member. And people have already used that channel to solicit input, to solicit collaborations. And it's a great way if you're an entrepreneur or a service provider or um, any participant in the community to work with colleagues. Uh, we have something called, uh, that I call in quotes, Ask Dr. CF. Dr. CF is Dr. Crowdfund. And any member can call us directly or email us directly and ask for some advice. We'll provide a user feedback and experience repository, kind of like a Better Business Bureau, that these parties or these deals 
have been satisfactory or less than that. And in the inevitable cases of not seeing eye to eye between participants of the field, we will offer voluntary mediation assistance uh, if it's acceptable to both parties. So you can join the CFPA as an individual, as a corporation, or as a sponsor, or as a student, or as a member of an affiliated organization. You can do that by going to the CFPA website, which is cfpa.org. For innovators and entrepreneurs, we will help you raise your money and build your crowd effectively. For the supporters and the investors, we will educate you as to what's a good deal, what you should look for. And for the service providers and platforms and legal uh, experts, etc., we can help you publicize what you offer to the world. In this year alone, in 2014, I and my colleagues will get the crowdfunding message and the CFPA message and the message of the CFPA's corporate members and sponsors out to between 40 and 50,000 entrepreneurs. In this room, most of the people already are up to speed on crowdfunding. It's the, we're preaching to the choir here, the in crowd. CFPA is the best channel I know of for getting the message and the offerings of this community out to the greater world that we all believe needs them. So we are operational. One case study that I think is, is really illustrative of why the CFPA is needed, the Oculus story, which you're all probably pretty much aware of. 10,000 Kickstarter supporters contributed a little over $2 million to a virtual reality goggle. That led to 38 million of VC money coming in very shortly thereafter, and that led to a $2 billion exit by Kickstarter. <coughs> now those, those 10,000 kicks, uh, excuse me, by Facebook, those 10,000 Kickstarter supporters got exactly what they were promised. Nothing except the virtual reality goggles. But many people feel that they were not treated fairly, that since their dollars started the whole success story going, that they should have had the opportunity to have a stake in that success. Well, that's what Title III is going to allow. They couldn't do it when Oculus started, um, but next year, hopefully, this will be possible. Could Oculus have had this wonderful success without the crowdfunding supporters? I don't think so. The venture capitalists wouldn't have had something to invest in. Facebook wouldn't have invested. But if Oculus had made use of a Title III-like transaction that wasn't done really right, would the VCs have put in their next money and would Facebook have wanted to buy it out? I think the answer is, if it's done right, as we are one of the only parties indicating how we can make this, trans this process work for the future Oculus of the world, and if it's done poorly, um, the rewards-based and the securities-based forms of crowdfunding may be in competition. So my bottom line message is um, there are some flyers in the next room. It would have been on the screen, but it isn't due to technical issues here. Take one of those flyers. The contact information is there. My personal phone number, and I get all the emails. Um, I have made the commitment that we are going to provide the most diligent, attentive service to this industry that we can and do everything in our power to make it a success. Ideas, suggestions are always welcome. My, my closing note, the CFPA is the crowdfunding community. The crowdfunding community is CFPA. Everybody with an interest or an activity in this should join to help direct, to help steer the ship, to help inform and allow us to together shape the best possible crowdfunding community and economy that we can. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Charlie, I just had a question for me. If anybody wants to be know about the membership for audience at home and all people that we brought this at the Kaufman Beat, what are they going to go? What's your website? Uh, CFPA.org. Thank you very much, Charlie. Appreciate it. Good work you do for crowdfunding industry. I know you travel all the time. I want to bring a couple of our sponsors over here. Um, just, maybe I just want to talk to you. Come. I want to talk to you about it just to briefly before we start the panel talking about his. Uh, he's come all the way from Florida. Got great 
uh, the young man. So tell us what you do and your company. Introduce over here. Introduce yourself as you just give. You got two minutes. Thank you. Hi everyone. My name is Herwig. Uh, I'm actually a University of Miami student dropout uh, to pursue a business full time that I've been working on called Accredify. And Accredify is a little different from other verification services because we make the customer the investor. And so we charge $49 a year for them to have access to our verification forms and then give them a certificate that they can then reuse everywhere that accepts our certificates. We today, today actually announcing at this conference, released our API, which is being used by Sterling Funder, Patch of Land, DLC, and several other platforms. Testing to one, two, three. Make it very simple, actually instant, like Facebook Connect, to log into a platform, instantly share your accreditation, and, and have compliance be taken care of immediately. And it's, of course, a free tool to use for the industry. Get a microphone. What is what is what is your platform does? Does who who goes to the investors or so? Yep. So investors are the ones who come to this platform. It's a it's a tool created for them because we feel that this is an industry that's not really covered for investors. So we believe that we will continue to create tools and products for investors to use to make crowdfunding easy and, and feasible. So who is benefiting? So investors basically they pay that forty nine dollars. To be accredited. The reason they pay that $49 is because, as we, we may have noticed today, it's, it's an onerous process to continue to give out your financial information to deal after deal, to platform after platform. It's, it's something nobody wants to do. Uh, so by using our certificates, you limit that exposure completely because our, our certificates are completely compliant with the SEC. So it's, it's an instant and free process for platforms to use. So really, the industry benefits from it. So your API is going to handle uh, embed with the existing platform, correct? Uh, uh, yep. Uh, in fact, it's already live in several platforms and more uh, as we speak. So, what's the website if anybody out there at home and want to go to know more about your great thing, your company? Yeah, if you're interested in, in or, or a high net worth individual that's looking to start to invest online, please visit accredify.co. Uh, and, and learn more about what it means to become a, an accredited investor and to start taking advantage of crowdfunding. Okay, it was for audience that they don't they have problems you know, like me with the spelling bees. How do you spell it? <laughs> so Accredify is uh, it's spelled A C C because of the word accredited. Uh, A C C R E D I F Y dot C O. Thank you very much. Thanks for being the sponsor of us. Appreciate it. Good luck with your ventures and welcome to the crowdfunding industry. Next panel. We're gonna have the final. We're gonna have, we're gonna we we love we put the best for the last. Last for the best. So I'm great to have my friends in here, Rodney, and uh, we're going to be talking about business of crowdfunding. We had Jeff, and welcome Jeff, and uh, Joseph Holm, Joseph, Roy, and uh, we we have right here and Peter, and uh, Peter's Peter's great. I'm glad you're here, Peter's, because you 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 handle a lot of those great. Uh, uh, crowdfunding films and other studios and all those things. So basically, we got. Let me give you a microphone here. I think I have a wireless here. Okay, guys. So I'm gonna be just. Uh, oh, where are you? Come on in. Come on down. Come on. Come on down. Hey, you know, I'm sorry. I must be. You know, come on down. Come on. Let me get your chair here, please. You came all the way from LA here and said, hey, ladies first. And I apologize. They g we're going to, they're probably going to a lot of hate mails from the audience. <laughs> Come on, down there. I was sit down. Maybe we should move the whole table over this way a little. Yeah, we're just going to do that. Yeah, this is a very, it's, it, this, the panel is a business of the crowdfunding. Very important panel. Yeah. Uh, if, if if your Michael's coming and help, that's great. <laughs> that's a, you know you all for it. Okay, and uh, you guys, uh, we have a timing here, which is pretty good. And uh, okay, that's good. we have already have. Let's just let's just be kind of a open discussion here. All right. Yeah. We should say it's uh, 4.30 and uh, 
Well, okay. Letitia, thank you. Dr. Letitia Wright, could you um, introduce yourself? Tell us what do you do to the audience. We know you. We know all the good things, and you have a lot of followers. I know that. I'm one of them, actually. You have your own TV channel. I'm going to give you the mic. Could you go ahead and just uh, introduce one and one and uh, tell them what exactly what you guys do? So. Uh, I'm Dr. Letitia Wright. I am a crowdfunding strategist. And what I've been doing for the last three years is teaching entrepreneurs about crowdfunding. Um, I do take private clients and, and do their whole campaign for them. But my main thing is that entrepreneurs, especially women and minorities, don't even know what crowdfunding is. So I teach for the Small Business Administration. I teach for the SBDC. I also teach for MBA programs at Cal State San Bernardino. But I, at tomorrow, I'll be at Mom 2.0 at Ritz-Carlton teaching crowdfunding. Literally, when he said, minorities and women are not really raising that much money, they literally don't know about it. And I talk to all entrepreneurs. So my Twitter has got mostly males, you know, the Apple buyers, because <laughs> they want to know what I'm talking about. But I love entrepreneurs having this information and being able to use it for themselves. So. Primarily, I'm teaching and training about crowdfunding. Uh, Roy Morjan, uh, drove down 85 from Charlotte to be here. Uh, I run a digital marketing agency uh, that basically works with startups and crowdfunding, uh, basically helping them present their case as far as marketability of their product on Kickstarter or Indiegogo or some of the smaller crowdfunding platforms out there. Uh, we were one of the leaders in the space. We've been doing this for about three and a half years. Uh, we've successfully funded over 85 projects, raising nearly $6 million for our clients. Um, so we work with them full service from beginning the product, setting up their foundation as far as website, social media, engaging with their communities, and then running their full, full marketing campaign uh, throughout, and then retaining them thereafter uh, to help them continue with pre-sales of their products. Uh, hey there, my name is Peter Sothopoulos. I'm a uh, entertainment and tax attorney. Um, work with two firms. Uh, Bennett Thrasher is a consulting firm, and Macy Walensky is a uh, law firm. I work with uh, entertainment clients who uh, are interested in uh, crowdfunding, whether that be you know, traditional reward-based or uh, equity uh, crowdfunding to fund their entertainment uh, projects. I think crowdfunding has some unique appeal to the entertainment industry in, in that you're, you're, you're selling sizzle, you're selling ideas, you're selling uh, concepts, uh, not so much a, a return on investment, and that's really usually the last thing investors want to talk about. They're, they're usually much more excited about the concept and, and the sizzle. So it's it's a great um, it's a great marriage of two industries if if, if we can uh, make crowdfunding work for the uh, entertainment industry. Jeff, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good to see you again. Thanks for the invite. Uh, my name is Jeff Bacaris, and uh, I am an attorney by trade, practiced securities law for about seven years here in the great state of Georgia. Um, and then about a year and a half ago, I left full-time practice to co-found um, Spark Market, which is an intrastate-only crowdfunding platform here in Georgia. And I'm currently the chief operating officer, um, as well as I, I suppose general counsel and chief calisthenics officer and janitor at Spark Market. I spend every morning uh, making promises. I spend every afternoon trying to figure out how I'm going to fulfill those promises the next day, which makes me, a, I suppose, a true entrepreneur at this point. Um, and uh, we, uh, as far as I know, uh, our platforms closed the first successful securities-based uh, crowdfunding raise uh, in the United States last fall. And we're working on more. We're working uh, on a project with uh, Dr. Rodney Stampson now. So thanks. Good to be here. Uh, thank you. Did you learn how to play that bohemian guitar? The last time I had an interview with you, <laughs> I had trouble with it. Poorly, I'm afraid. Uh, I, I, I don't have a, 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 a budding career in the music industry. Yeah, okay. well, good. Yeah. So good to know. <laughs> uh, Joseph, welcome. All the way from California. you got a great brand. Tell us what you do thank for the you audience. First of all, thanks for having me. Thanks for putting on this great event in Sydney. This is really important for our young industry. My name is Joseph Holm. Uh, I'm an internet entrepreneur of about 17 years. I uh, started building websites, that is social media, affiliate marketing, um, business development. And uh, about two years ago, I learned about crowdfunding. Pretty much dropped everything else I was doing because I thought this is the most disruptive and wonderful thing that I've seen in my career. 
Um, I've uh, since then launched uh, a crowdfunding platform for YouTubers and digital video creators called CubeStart. We're um, different from Indiegogo or Kickstarter in that we offer features and crowdfunding models that other platforms um, don't offer. We've um, spent a lot of time working out the pain points. Um, as many of you know, and everybody here probably, crowdfunding is a completely different game in each vertical. So we're trying to conquer the digital entertainment video market. Okay, Dr. Simpson. I think we can pick up the microphone and it will be comfortable. I think we have another one right here too. My name is Rodney Sampson, and the only thing I can say I can claim is being in the new creator for South by Southwest 2015 with Joseph that just came out today. So uh, that was pretty cool. Um, um, seriously, um, I'm a local angel investor. I own a co working space here locally um, called the Opportunity Hub, located in downtown Atlanta in the old historic Macy's building. It's about 10,000 square foot co working space. I um, authored a book about two years ago entitled Kingonomics, um, 12 Innovative Currencies for Transforming Your Business and Life, inspired by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I uh, became a uh, bestseller and we turned that into a, a conference that we convene annually, sometimes twice a year, where we attract uh, about 1,000 adults and 500 teens. Last year we held the conference in Washington, D.C. during the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington to make a statement that it was called the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, and what better way to create jobs and freedom but through the Jobs Act. And um, uh, we've been on this journey for uh, a couple of years now. Uh, what I'm really excited about um, in terms of our work in crowdfunding is we believe we're about to embark upon the most aggressive uh, equity-based crowdfunding campaign, interstate-based, but of course, since Title III is not live, it'll be Na national uh, stat, hopefully, with Spark Market as our platform uh, for the for the general public. Um, and I'm an Atlanta native, by the way. Good. Yeah. Well, well, we're glad to be in Atlanta. We should say for our audience at home. For having us. And yeah, Atlanta is great, and uh, we have the two California and the, but this is a whole international. And I'm very honored to be you know uh, moderating this great panel because. Uh, and it's all about the business of the crowdfunding, you know, and the, you do start up, we have an attorney here, basic does a lot of the entertainment, Dr. Leticia has got, works with the minority woman, and they, you know, Roy, so this is great, so it's going to be an interesting subject, so uh, the crowdfunding is not only in one segment of the uh, particular industry, so it evolved into different, and like Joseph, you do at the tube start, so let me ask the question, I start from the, you, Dr. So uh, how long have you been in the crowdfunding industry and what have you seen, what, what evolved in your, in your part? You do have a television show, so what do you see? What is the trend? Is it, is it you know, going forward? I know a lot of people are, is, what do you see? How is going to help women in this? Oh, absolutely. I've been uh, doing crowdfunding for three years and, and the way three I years. got started is uh, with people that were doing films. I have friend, you know, I'm in LA, got friends doing films and they asked me to help because I'm good with social media. Mm -hmm. So I did help, but crowdfunding is so close to how independent filmmakers raise money for films, I just thought, okay, they're just raising money for a film. I didn't get that they were crowdfunding. Then I had a personal friend do a project on Kickstarter called A Pug Named Fender. And I got to see A Pug Named Fender from beginning to end. It clicked, and I thought, oh my gosh. How come people don't know about this? I literally got the teaching job at the SBA because I called them and said, you know, you need a class on crowdfunding. These people don't know about crowdfunding. And they said, oh, what's crowdfunding? So yeah, I'm booked to teach there for the next, you know, three years. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's um, definitely growing. I really want to see women get more involved, get m involved in higher amounts. Um, I think it's fabulous. It's just like all of us, you know, you fall in love with the possibilities of being free of trying to get loans and trying to do this and trying to, it seems very freeing. Um, you're able to build community. Women are very good at building community. And so it just makes sense. So yeah, is it growing? Yes, but people have to understand what it is. And when you ask them, you know, do you know about crowdfunding? They say, well, is it Kickstarter? <laughs> so 
We, we call it kickstarted economy. Yeah. There's a lot of people over there. Well, that's great. Good work you do. And thanks for just letting everybody know about the crowdfunding, I think. But it's, I think it's evolving to in very much in the moment because we just had a, in Silicon Valley conferences I just left, and we had a panel just particularly about the, uh, you know, women in crowdfunding and women entrepreneurs in the crowdfunding. Roy, you help a lot of these Kickstarters, Indiegogo people actually, you know, and their remote crowdfunding. Tell us, what do you see? How much money ra you raise for them? And what if for people that they want to start the campaign, because after all, this is education for us. What do they got to do? You know, I mean, Dr. Swart was mentioning something that they got to do a good video and good audio. Wh what do you see? What has your experience been? Yeah, absolutely. So in the past three years, we've seen a lot of changes, even platform-wise, as far as the due diligence that the platforms are doing now to make sure that these companies are more legitimate and making sure that they actually have almost a business plan, a business model, and they're not just, oh, I have this idea, let's just throw it out there and see what happens. You have to be more well-established at this point and have this documentation in line, the R&D process, what you're thinking of coming out with, and you know, it, you can't just put this uh, an idea out there yet. You have to do all of this work before as far as engaging the community, seeing if there's updates that you could make on this product. Is it a good idea? Because not every idea is good for crowdfunding. Um, just because of the platform that's out there. Um, so we've seen a, a shift there. Um, as far as momentum wise, we work with, you know, a majority of them are in the tech space. Um, we feel like Kickstarter is a great spot for them. Um, we're shifting as far as platforms to launch campaigns on uh, more towards Indiegogo now due to their advanced analytics and back end tracking. Um, Kickstarter's analytics are weak, very weak, and we have a hard time discerning where leads came from because they don't track things very well as far as first and last click attribution. Um, and Indiegogo now has the ability to host a campaign on your own website utilizing their outpost, which is a great resource for you if you don't want to send the traffic to Indiegogo necessarily, send them to a comfortable website, your website, and they can place their bids on that site. Um, so we're seeing a, a shift there uh, as far as platform wise. You see a follow-up question, and did you see a lot of institutional, not just individual uh, campaigner, will come to this market? Because I've seen a lot of, like you know, movie theater, some other, say some of the products they're coming to. So it's not just some particular putting their project. It could be an institution in this. Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah, we're seeing some large, large brands come into play now, as far as like co-producers almost on these projects, uh, kind of being sidelined VC investors almost into the platform. Should they raise a certain amount, then you get more money from these companies. So and we're definitely seeing a shift there. And so your companies like you helping them, what do you do for them? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a brand positioning for them and figuring out if crowdfunding is a good position for these larger companies to dive into and picking the right project is really critical for them as well. That aligns with their brand positioning and the product that's being crowdfunded. Okay, thanks. Yep. Um, I know we had some interview with you, and then I invite you here to, you know, it was a great interview, and for crowdfunded, I recommend you have the Devon. Thank you. And, um, but I was very interested in when I was in, I'm actually uh, seeing that, that the, the movie industries, they are getting up, I mean, and I know a couple of brands actually in the back in the West Coast and East Coast, and uh, the movie studios are getting to this. What is your experience? I mean, you're an attorney for these people. What, I what, 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 what interests you to get to this crowdfunding? Sure. Well, the entertainment industry has never had traditional access to capital, at least at the sub-studio level. So independent film producers, and they haven't had access to traditional VC markets. So it's been, it's, uh, they, they've always had a hard time getting the capital. So that's, it's kind of a unique marriage for them to get to crowdfunding. Because traditionally, they've had to raise it from friends and family, and then um, there are various other <coughs> buckets of money to get, but they're very dear. There's, uh, there's foreign pre-sale lending, there's tax credit lending, but there's gap uh, f financing, but they're all very expensive money. And so uh, having the opportunity to raise uh, money through crowdfunding is, is great. And, it's, it, and they offer a very uh, interesting product. They, they, you know, rather than a return on investment, they're offering kind of an experience. The, uh, this is especially on the equity side. You, know, you, you own a piece of, uh, of the film uh, or a TV show. And so uh, I've, I've had a lot of clients that have been circling around, that have done reward-based campaigns that are really circling around equity. What's kept them out of it is uncertainty about if you raise uh, money through the equity, let's say the interstate uh, Georgia platform, does that preclude you from raising you know, private offerings uh, and other buckets of money? And until those issues are resolved, mo most of my clients are still on the sidelines. But you know, the entertainment industry has always been very innovative about how they raise money. So for instance, the, the Hollywood Motion Picture Studios 
were amongst the first to use the uh, the foreign visa program to raise money. They you know they saw a need for Chinese and uh, investors in Dubai, etc., who were interested in uh, acquiring visas, and uh, they kind of pioneered that concept about 10 years ago to, uh, to to get capital into the country to work together on on film finance projects. Um, uh, who are the people actually? Where the we should say that uh, have we're in Georgia, so Georgia yeah. interstate. You could do. Uh, can you do equity in, uh, yes, in Georgia? I'll, I'll defer to my my uh, colleague here with uh, with with the Georgia uh, platform. But yes, Georgia is is an exception. Uh, Georgia the the Georgia has an exception to the blue sky rules and allows you to raise. Georgia companies can raise yeah. up to million dollars from Georgia residents using Georgia banks uh, in an equity. Uh, uh, so we're going to see, I remember uh, specifically was asking about uh, uh, films. Has anybody done some equity film crowdfunding Not here? Yet. They're, Not they're, yet. A lot of them are circling around so it because of the uncertainty, but they're very interested in it. And so uh, I, I expect somebody's going to dive in pretty quick. So we're not going to have a deliverance um, time free? <laughs> we might. We I just might. <laughs> I should have thrown that. Yeah. Jeff, you are, you are, you are uh, you're, uh, I, by the way, I liked, you know, uh, Brett Reynolds on that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I was a kid. Yeah. Um, Jeff, uh, what is what is going on here? This is uh, is this going to be um, states going to take the matters to their hand? I mean, what you you got it very. You were in Wall Street Journal. I mean, you know, you're you're national postcard for the intrastate crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. So and um, you know, it was big news and it still is. And you did some deals. Tell us about it. what is your experience been? What sure. what deal you done? Just for the audience, they don't know. Tell us what you deal. Sure, with sure, sure. No problem. So there, there's a lot to say, uh, which is which is great for us and great for the industry. And there's more happening every day. Um, the deal that we did last fall was with a company called Bohemian Guitars. They're kind of an artisanal musical instrument manufacturer, small shop. A couple of brothers as co-founders. Uh, to one one extra employee at the time. Now I believe two extra employees. And what's been going on with them has been fantastic. Their interstate campaign was, was very successful. Um, they met their minimum pretty quickly, closed the campaign early, actually, because they had the cash and they were ready to move on uh, back to making guitars. Since that time, and, and since we talked, actually, they um, have moved on um, um, to bigger and better contracts. Um, they've scaled up their manufacturing. Their orders are going crazy. And I'm happy to announce today, actually, they just announced yesterday, put a press release out, that they've been accepted into the 500 uh, startups program in Silicon Valley. So they, they are now, yes, they are now the... That's a good program. It's a great program, and they will be the first, as I understand it, the very first non-tech company um, to be accepted into that program. So. Yeah, it's it's really exciting. It's a big investment uh, in their company as well as um, you know, it's like three or four months of uh, accelerator training and, and all the rest of it. So we're real real excited for them, and their crowdfund, their Georgia-based crowdfund investors are real happy today. I promise you. So that's that's been going on. I do want to say one thing really yeah. quickly in response, sure. but else is going on. We are working on a film project now, yeah, actually. So, so yeah, 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 we're working on a film project. We've had interest from a few other film projects. I think we're meeting with another potential film project or the next week they get this. Um, crowdfunding already is a demonstrated model that works in film, uh, at least that is to say that it attracts crowdfund backers. Um, so we're real excited about it and based on you know some of the other um, incentives we have for the film industry here in Georgia, we're gonna see that more and more. Yeah. So Good luck to you. Can yeah, you just say a word about that? Yeah, one unique thing about film is, for equity crowdfunding is Georgia already, there's already significant federal and Georgia based incentives for the film yeah. industry. So if you're an equity investor in a Georgia crowdfund film, there's a 30% Georgia refundable, not refundable, transferable credit. So your money at risk is already offset by that 30% transferable credit. And section 181, if it's continued, provides basically accelerated write off from a federal tax perspective. So an investor in a film project is already starting with a significant portion of their money uh, covered by tax benefits. Yeah, so they do have to tax money. And, 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 and that's great, Debbie, and you're mentioning, but, but that's what I see, a lot of trend that a lot of people that they go, and you help those people actually get national exposure and be in the 500 uh, startup, which is great program in Silicon Valley over there. But the crowdfunding platform are becoming pre-launching. You know, so there were a couple of actually uh, big projects. The one of them just bought out Atlas about $2 billion, you know, that two, but with a B, buying Facebook, they went to the crowdfunding platform. 
And so they got attention, they got the market validation. And you know, just recently, you know, it was uh, another company, Tile. So a lot of these platforms is becoming like what like you did, you know, and they come and the platform, you raise some money, they got some interest, they get market validation, so they go to the next level being the, you know, uh, accelerators, you know, and just raise money to go to full capital. So that's a great thing that, you know, you work with entrepreneurs and you see them excited. Who knew about this, this thing? And go, and, and I, I want to know, Joseph, uh, what do you see over there? You work with a lot of these uh, tube start and other thing, and you have a different business model and it's film. What is tube start? I mean, tell us in what, do, what do you do exactly with a tube start, with the uh, you know, entertainers and the people, filmmakers? How can you help them to bring the products, their art more than okay. products out? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, like, like Peter just mentioned before, um, the entertainment industry has to be very creative when it comes to finding funding for their productions. Uh, web series and YouTubers are no different. They're just like any other indie producer. They just don't get any money from anyone. What they make is, is their AdSense revenue. Um, big YouTubers will get branding deals, but there are about a, a million YouTube creators who get AdSense checks every month, but only a couple of hundred actually are big enough so they can actually support a living and the production cost. So what we're trying to do is we try to, we try to help uh, web series creators to make that transition from an amateur producer to a professional producer and the things that you mentioned before like market validation and uh, also risk mitigation are are very um, undervalued um, things that, that crowdfunding can bring to the table when it comes to uh, launching a project so one of the things that that is really prom problematic on YouTube is is that people don't get enough money paid out through AdSense so as opposed to other crowdfunding platforms where you can have a 30, 60, 90 day one-off kind of campaign, mm -hmm. one of the things that we do to set us apart is um, we offer a subscription-based crowdfunding model. So basically as a creator, you can come and set up a monthly recurring campaign that someone can subscribe to. Um, give me five bucks every month and as soon as you have enough money in your, in your perk wallet, you can redeem it for a t-shirt or a hat or some mm -hmm. other non-monetary um, reward. Um, that's just one of the things that we're doing. I mean, the, the whole space in LA, and you know this too, um, there, there is so much going on right now, also in crowdfunding. Um, we're, we're bridging two disruptive markets, pretty much with digital video and, and crowdfunding in a new form that, that Kickstarter and Indiegogo don't offer. Good. I should say that, you know, we have a, a crowdfunding film festival. It's going to be in LA in the October 2nd. That, you know, this is our second year. So we see a lot of people, a couple of good films been made on the and successful one, you know, one of them is just won the Oscar in last year in documentary in Cine, and uh, this year with Veronica Mars and also with uh, Zach Barf, you know, yeah, and so there's a lot of good thing happening. One of the thing is that about uh, the crowdfunding and film, and, and it works, it's like real estate, and I agree with uh, Peter here, because there's an exit in, in the crowdfunding and film, and also it's not only uh, the, the filmmakers, I mean filmmakers, they do the money, the Hollywood producers and other people, they're actually um, they're involved in this because they see it as a crowd collaboration. They're looking for those uh, uh, next trend, you know, whatever, what is going to be a next Hunger Game, what are going to be a next Harry Potter, so I'm going to be on that. So they're looking for those keyboards on the internet, on the tweeters, so then they will have interest uh, fan in those and then basically then they're going to raise money on the reward at this time, and, you know, and, and, but not only those guys going to be getting a t-shirt or going to two movie, but they're going to be actually collaborating to promoting that particular movie. So they're going to be from the day one and basically going later on, you know, when the product is finished so they can go see it. So I was part of this movie. My credit will be there. So it's very, very interesting about this movie industry and the crowd collaborations and crowdfunding just being an element of it. So it works. And, and okay, doctor, thank you. Um, what do you do? I know you're doing great stuff. I've, I've, I've been following you for years. You know, I, I, I read actually your book. You've got a great book, and I got a signature of you. I highly recommend, you know, tell us about your book, uh, Kingonomics. And you work with a lot of startup. You have a good conference here every year around January. You have a uh, place with all these startup. Come tell us about what you do in the startup world. Sure. Well, Mike. 20 years of 20 years. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I have to reflect back a little bit. Yeah, sure. You know, you know, 20 years ago when I was an undergraduate starting my first startup, it's in New Orleans at Tulane University. There were no. 
Twenty. <laughs> That's a good. You see the yeah. <laughs> um, you threw me off. That was <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there were no incubators, no accelerators, no co-working spaces, no meetups, no networking. It, it was like you just had to kind of figure your way out, right? And if you could attach to a mentor who had time to see you, so. We started, I mean, just kind of on this journey of how do we create this, this, this ecosystem, right? So the fundamental construct of the book is how do we disrupt poverty and the racial wealth gap in America? And so we start looking at, and there are all these types of solutions around understanding the value of the dollar, financial literacy, et cetera, et cetera. But we saw there's a fundamental gap in an understanding of the innovation, entrepreneurship, and investment you know, ecosystem. And so we have a philosophy that you cannot withdraw from an ecosystem that you're not invested in. And the reality of it is, when you start looking at, you know, Dr. Schwartz gave some amazing data earlier um, about how the West Coast was leading, and then you look at pockets on the East Coast. What he didn't point out was Georgia was, was um, actually, you know, a visible presence on the map. And I think that's, you know, thanks to like Spark Market, and of course, you know, companies like Masur um, that Paul Judge is an investor in, they raised $140,000. The seed investor is actually um, a black male and the company is actually two black co-founders out of Georgia Tech. And the reason I make that uh, distinguishing factor is when you look at the Southeast versus, you know, a Silicon Valley or New York or Boston or even a Texas, like a Austin to some degree, you know, there's a lot of talk about the ecosystem, but these startups, you know, black, white, or indifferent, there's a gap in seed capital and early stage capital. It is really non-existent. It's not like being in Silicon Valley, or even New York has its challenges, but Silicon Valley is kind of the meritocracy, quote unquote, that everybody champions. And you know, you'll get 50,000 to $100,000 in seed capital, and young you know, college startups are shopping term sheets because they have options. You get a $10,000 check in Atlanta, and you, you think you've arrived because that C capital is incredibly negligible. So a part of our goal is how do we solve that? And how do we do something that's meaningful but also definitive at the same time? So, you know, placing the Opportunity Hub, you know, this, this co-working space, and now doing this crowdfunding round. The reality is, you know, and Secretary Kent was here earlier this, this morning, Georgia did a phenomenal job in leading the way in terms of um, uh, the Invest Georgia exemption and then the parallel, um, the angel tax credit that exists as well. So we've got a few different laws on the books that help to kind of speed up. Um, and there's a third one where the state appropriated, didn't fund it, but at least they appropriated $100 million in venture capital to work with different fund managers around the state. So we're thinking about how do we attract capital that's here already. But no one's really starting to write these, these checks yet. So we're really trying to, to, to solve that challenge. And to see a non-tech company, you know, a consumer product in essence, have crowdfunded you know, their, their, their startup capital and now pivot to one of the nation's most renowned accelerators, it, it, there's, there's, there's a lot of hope for the Southeast and for the nation in general. And I think there's a trend there um, and we're starting to do this. We're writing small checks at the Opportunity Hub now. We look to do more through this raise where we accelerate companies and get them to the point where they can pivot. But who wants to talk about growth capital and SBA loans and all of the things that most entrepreneurs are pointed towards that they can't even get because they have no, you know, no revenue. So I think crowdfunding has an incredible opportunity to address that disparity. And if we address that disparity across racial lines, across you know, economic, social, any type of social economic um, line, that's where the impetus of new job creation is. And that's why we're involved in this movement. That's good, so it's called Opportunity, what's the Opportunity Hub, which I like the name, yeah. Opportunity uh, Hub. Opportunity Hub. So, you know, o -hub, for sure. so dot com, is it to anybody out oh, there who in Georgia and other places? OHUB200. OHUB200. Oh, so, and yeah. these are the people actually, they're entrepreneurs, they come there and you kind of uh, coach them and you use crowdfunding as part of uh, you know, their uh, yeah. products, basically, you know, so they can just get yeah. attention. I mean, we, we have a personal goal. So, we, we're incubating about, and I use that word incubation lightly because I know it's misused, but we basically have about 70 companies that are working out of the space right now. So we've got a, a good core group. We're kind of adding to it daily. We, we lose a few because they don't get capitalized. But we want 
that hub to be the home of crowdfunding mm -hmm. in the Southeast. We want, when people think about, I have a startup, where do I go to raise my seed capital or my early stage capital? We want them to think you know, of, of the opportunity. So that's, that's sum it up. So I'm gonna ask the general question. So you know, we, have, we have Dr. Letitia here, and, I, and Ray, Laura here, Peter, Jeff, Joseph, and you guys. So your guys are working different aspect of the crowdfunding. You know, I mean, you're on, you know, doing startup. Joseph, being a filmmaker, you're working with the entrepreneurs out there. You're attorney working with, it, and you help people to brand themselves, right? So I want to start with you. Um, what is next for what? Do, what are we waiting for? What do you, What do you think this uh, this title three and all this Dr. Swatter was mentioning actually earlier and said uh, all these things is happening around the world. What are we, with, for audience at home, you have a lot of experts here among us and we're sitting down in this, and uh, we, we put this uh, video together and this live stream. And for somebody new wants to get to this, they've heard of Kickstarters and you know, or crowdfunding and they want to come to this industry which is uh, you know, evolving in a, in a very phenomenon way. I mean, I see that you know, other aspect of crowdfunding works. And what, what would you say to people who want to get into this business? How would you do it? You know, how, how would they go with that? I know they have one thing. They have to go to Crowdfund Beat and read some of the articles <laughs> that we <laughs> put together, and that will be a good start for them. No, and, and that's what we do. And, and great to have you here so they can hear. What is, what is your advice? I definitely advise that people start to educate themselves. There's a lot of information out there. But I'm, like I said, you rarely walk into a room and say, hey, you were crowdfunding and everybody uh, other than this room, nobody knows what you're talking about. And so it's highly important that we get the general public, we get the underserved, we get, you know, people, even people in the film industry, they are, you know, they're like so cool as of what it's about. And so I really want to see a lot of education happen. If you're coming into this industry, um, uh, Kendall said one thing, he said people tell him they want to try crowdfunding. I literally have potential clients saying that every single week. And it's not a try. This is, there's so much money out there. There's so much potential out there. But you've got to have education. And you've got to take some time to do it. And, and I know you guys have had this experience too. They talk to you for an hour. And they feel like they have your Keep level going. of education. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and oh, OK, thanks. I'm ready to go. And it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. There's a, we put a lot of study in there. We, we look at this information every day, we're reading about it, we're re I'm reading everybody else's stuff to keep up on what's going on. K education is a huge key. It is not mainstream yet. You guys are used to it, you guys are excited about it, but it is not mainstream yet. It's not, yeah, that's what we're what, 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 what do you think? So how are we gonna, I know your company helping a lot of people to you know brands and to go and take, take themselves to the next level, you know, but the crowdfunding start with the family and friends. It's typical crowdfunding or crowdfunding is a lot of things before equity. We're talking reward now. Right. How do they start? I mean, how do, what, is, what is your recommendation if somebody's out there? By the way, I think some of these people that they go in the platform and they fail, they don't make the right one, but the good news is there's a data. You know, they can go and find out what, what they went wrong, you know, and they can restart themselves again. So you get that feedback. So it's not a failure to me. It's, it's just, you know, uh, it's just a record to make it to the next level. For me. So what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, not, like I mentioned earlier, not every product is meant for crowdfunding. Yeah. Um, and, you know, each platform's a little bit different. We're seeing, you know, differences bet between the two. Um, but again, you know, like she was saying, you know, research and education is, is by far the most influential piece as far as going forward with your crowdfunding campaign on the reward side of things. Um, there's a lot of data out there, and there's been thousands and thousands of campaigns. I think Kickstarter has crossed now the 60,000 mark as far as successful campaigns, uh, and they've crossed a billion dollars of total funding through their platform. So there's loads of data. Um, you know, I just did an interview last week with a gentleman of Sidekick, which is a predictive analytics platform and software piece that can tell whether or not a campaign will be successful or not pretty much within the first four hours to four 48 hours. Um, and there's a lot of different factors there, and Indiegogo has a factor, an algorithm called the GoGo factor, and you know they take into account you know the project goal, the duration, how much money has been pledged, the frequency, how much time is left, and then they take into account the social shareability, how many shares have been, whether those people were influential, 
Have they backed other programs? Were those programs successful? And we can find out through all of this data whether or not a campaign will be successful utilizing that historical data and the program and project that you're trying to create. Yeah, well, that's good. I can say that the, uh, what's the latest and the card? I know the video games are work, but what's the uh, Anderson's uh, has the 38 million right now so far? Is it going for his? Uh, Which um, one? Yeah, Anderson for the Star Citizen. Okay, uh, I'm not familiar. You know, with that yeah, well, Star Citizen is a video game that has been crowdfunded, and uh, there are over 30 mil, 8 million already, and they haven't delivered one product yet. But everybody, l and and it's unbelievable. I mean, this this guy out of the valley, and you know, so is nobody talks about it, but it's th he raised 38 million, and I want to add up to that one million of uh, on one billion uh, crowdfunding, but the uh, Kickstarter another two billion. Three billion, one, two billion, in one deal by itself. Not in Kickstarter, right. outside of the Kickstarter. Right outside of it. Do you see, Peter? That would bring me now to the next question. Do you see, um, you know, as a as an attorney, you work with a lot of these industries, and you you so did you deal with the clients? Actually, they do have money. They want to use crowdfunding for the, basically as part of their product. Do you see, it, when equity, when Title Three in the national level will will we'll sooner or later get to that uh, pass the law. What do, what do you see? These people are stepping to this uh, game or? Yeah, I, I see several things. One, Georgia money really hasn't gotten into the entertainment industry. Yeah. So the entertainment industry is huge right now in Georgia as a production destination. We, we had a little over a billion in expenditures last year for productions here. But Georgia money has not gotten in the game. These guys are, the money's coming from New York, LA, off, offshore. So. It's a very small community. Once somebody becomes aware that you can successfully raise local money, I think if we have one or two successful campaigns uh, from Georgia money getting into Georgia-based films, uh, it's a small community. Word will spread. I think a year from now it'll be an utterly different landscape. It just it would just need to, to have one successful campaign. So you're going to see a lot of movies being made to in Georgia and other places that they have their crowdfunding? The movies are being made here now. What we're going to see is Georgia money getting in the game. Right. Georgia money getting. So this so is going to help state yes. in every state over there. So I always thought, you know, crowdfunding, one of the things that I got interested in the crowdfunding was, you know, spending money, you know, and with your own community. So the kids doesn't need to go to Silicon Valley or they can stay in your family, you know, right here. So because invest in your kid, invest in your peers and peer to peer. So I think it will work out very well. So they are waiting for that. They're waiting for yeah. so so do you think any I'm gonna ask you we have a panel tomorrow about interest rate kind of crowdfunding Jeff you're part of it, you know, but do you see that um, you know state is legal but it's just uh, limited to what you can do. So you think is uh, when that uh, job act SEC is passed, do you think it's tremendous yeah, deal flow is going to be? Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's going to change I game changer. Yes, I think you know. I think it's a natural marriage because the the product that they're selling is a concept. It's it's, it's interesting. It's salacious, and you can participate. Uh, I mean, just think about it. You can it, just on the reward side, um, being part of something cool, a, a cool movie, but then being able to on the equity side literally own a piece of, of a successful movie is. is it's a, it's a dream for many people and being more involved in movie uh, projects. And people want to be more involved in movies. So that's, uh, you know, that's where advertising is working towards. Every one of these shows in Georgia, uh, Walking Dead, what have you, have you know, social media and other ways yeah. for the, the, the fans to get more involved. And so this is a natural evolution to get more involved in terms of putting a small amount of money into it. I still like Smokey and Bandit. <laughs> 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 Jeff, uh, what is your thought about this? You know, you do a lot. I mean, you're advocated about interest state, and as I mentioned, what do you think is, uh, are you ready for the national, nationalize this? Your man went to the 500. Uh, so do you think is basically, when this thing's evolved to the, in the national level, what do you think is your position is going to be? Yeah, um, uh, so, you know, my platform is interest state only, and we've been advocates of that model from the get-go. I mean, it's interesting, you know, at this, if this conference was if we were sitting here a year ago, that banner wouldn't be up here right now. I mean, it's you know, interest state crowdfunding. Exactly. I mean, I it, like it, that. it would not have been up there. I mean, it's it, it is only as folks have evolved their thinking to understand the limitations of the Jobs Act as it's currently written that they've looked into alternatives and they've seen that there really is crowdfunding happening and it's happening right now. We don't have to wait on what's happening on the national scene. So, from our perspective. Yeah. 
you know, interstate, and my, my, my partner Megan will be here tomorrow on that specific, pan specific panel, so I don't want to take up too much time to talk yeah. about it now, but in response to your question specifically, what I think is going to happen when the Jobs Act rules come into place, and then hopefully as we see Jobs Act 2.0 at some point down the road, is that you're going to have specific industries that are natural fit for interstate crowdfunding because their product is agnostic to state lines. That's the thing that people aren't focusing on. Let's look at what the product is, right? So we see people all the time that say, I want to do a crowdfunding raise. I'm waiting on the Jobs Act. Well, you know, what's, what's your business? Well, I have a coffee shop. Well, why? I mean, it, wh why do you think that somebody in Washington or Nevada or California is going to give you money for your coffee shop? It's ridiculous. If you're going to get money for it, you're going to get it from in-state. And so, you know, a project like a film project that's a very natural fit for an interstate crowdfunding raise because it's something that's totally agnostic to state lines. If you have a consumer-based product that's agnostic to state lines, go with the Jobs Act. It makes sense. But if you have something that is local in character, why not use the interstate exemption and save yourself a whole bunch of money? So you think they can coexist to the national and interest? I think they can and I think they will. And eventually, most transactions by dollar value will be Jobs Act transactions. Most transactions by volume will be interstate transactions. It, it, to me, that's just obvious. Okay, well, that's good. Joseph, I know you go to a lot of conferences in different places, and you speak, and you see everywhere from you. And thanks for being here, by the way, coming to West Coast. And um, what do you see? What are we going here? I mean, everybody, in same question as uh, Jeff. Are we, are we, is it going to be a game changer? Or are we going to be waiting? I know you, you're in reward, but is it going to change anything on this Title three? Are we waiting? For the, by the way, I have to say, Title III is um, not, the audience yeah, is not, not so sure about that, yeah, and, and everybody not the tracking window. those titles of Title IV, raise about, you know, half a million dollars, you know, I mean, the, you know, that's, that's, that, those kind of things. What do you see, where are we going right now? Um, well, I can really only speak for our space, and, and it's, a, like my colleague said here, for the entertainment industry, it's a game changer, it's a natural fit, also for YouTube channels, if you, don't want to buy Google stock for a thousand bucks, maybe you want to buy into a YouTube channel for a smaller amount. Um, also, um, you know, for, for digital video web series, uh, we often don't have very good perks. You know, if you're not pre-selling a, a Pebble Watch or a piece of hardware, then it's sometimes hard for people to come up with something if that supporters actually want to spend money on. So uh, if I say, hey, Sydney, you know, I'm starting my new YouTube channel and g give me a hundred bucks and I'll send you a t-shirt, that may not sound so attractive to you, but if I say, hey, look, you can invest in my YouTube channel, here's my plan, this is what I want to do, this is going to be big time business, and you feel like, you know, if, if I become successful, you'll, you'll get a piece of the action, I think it changes the whole value proposition, so I'm, I'm super excited about it, and I think, it, it, like my colleague said, it will be a game changer. How many people, do your experience, how many people did they come to your website, they said to, to cheap start? All right, now it's I don't know several thousand. I don't know off the top of they're, my head. They've been, been doing yeah, some stuff. Yeah, but the way we the way we look at reward space crowdfunding on TubeStart right now is we're really just getting our feet wet. I mean, we are preparing for something equity, w whatever it will be. But that you're is the you're one of the t ten rank uh, in the crowdfunding. You know, when you put the word crowdfunding, you guys come up over there. So you oh, have because a lot I'm of really good at SEO. <laughs> 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 you gotta tell us that. But well, good, good, good thing. And that's another thing that I like. I mean, you know, that we should mention to the audience at home. Because uh, crowdfunding and uh, social network work. If you want to do crowdfunding, you got to know about your social networking. You know, and social networking becomes so ex very, very important. in you know, every corporation, every businesses that they have a title right now. I mean, there is not to be a, to be a social manager, social uh, media manager, but there is a title for that. So it is very important. If you do a, you know, um, campaign, if you're doing for your company, if you're doing for your own company, well, very, very important to take a look at that over there. Rodney, um, what is next? I mean, I know you're in, uh, you go a lot to Washington. You, you know, uh, you've got uh, powerful, knowledgeable friends, and in, in industry, and you know, and uh, uh, what do you see? What what do you see? We're going to be going into this next six months with the SEC and other other things in the plate right now. What what is your prediction? Well, I mean, just, I mean, just to reiterate, I think we'll all be optimistic. You know, if Title III moves forward, but of course, with all the limitations, you know, I hope what it inspires is just the interstate craze. You know, every state to look at what it can do um, as a response to Title III. Uh, Richard and others have suggested that. You know, uh, you know, when I do go to D.C., I'm also. You know, everybody talks about Title One, Two, Three, Four, Five, 
six, there's also a Title Seven of the Jobs Act. And Title Seven is specific to diversity and inclusion um, outreach under uh, the Jobs Act. And so I think as Title III moves forward, which we should look for for the next three to five years, is you know, education, 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 exposure, exposure, exposure. Um, I'm looking at this from a 20 year, like a generational perspective, you know, like, okay, let's start talking to the millennials. Uh, two weeks ago, um, I pitched to, um, uh, I basically exposed 46 college presidents. Uh, these are 46 historically black colleges and universities through the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. Um, we did a panel on crowdfunding one day to the business deans, and then I did, did a panel the next day to the presidents of the colleges and chancellors themselves. And like you said, most of them hadn't even heard of the term crowdfunding. And so when I go to DC, I'm saying whether it's rewards, perks, equity, a hybrid, et cetera, we have to make crowdfunding a household name. And I think that should be a fundamental, you know, fiduciary of all of us is whether or not it's we stand to benefit economically from it, is that we make crowdfunding a household name first. And then I think over the next five, ten, hopefully the next generation, you know, when you come from a culture where there's no startup capital, you don't know what an accredited investor is, your uncle can't stroke your check. You have no options. The SBA is not going to fund you. Everybody's not going to get on Shark Tank or the profit. So when you start looking at your options, crowdfunding is pretty much all you have. Like it's a fundamental game changer. I mean, if education is primary, if it's embraced, and then people understand this. Two things, and I'll close with this. And I said this to the my hashtag at the closing comments at the SEC um, earlier this year were. Failure is not fraud. We have to teach early investors that just because you invest in a startup, most of them fail. You know, bold red letters. But failure is not fraud because in the meantime, jobs are created. So when you look at kind of you know unemployment in America and communities that it disproportionately impacts, even if I have to invest just to create a job, just to keep you from stealing from me, to me, that's the winner, okay? To keep you out of the hospital because your poverty you know, predisposes you to health disparities. And if we can get you a job and get you skills and get you knowledge and then you can deal with your health better, to me, it's so many indirect opportunities to address society's issues. And so when I do talks, I say, you know what? Equity crowdfunding really isn't about you making money. It's about are you willing to invest in your community to create opportunity for that issuer, or that startup company, or that early stage company, or whatever stage they're in, to help create more jobs to make the community a whole. And if by chance I do get a return, okay, because all of my investments shouldn't be in private equity or alternative investments anyway, but if I do get a return, then that's extra. And so that's how we lead in our conversations. I think if you lead with, you know, I'm going Wild Wild West style. You know, I got $2,000, $10,000 a year, and I'm gonna put it across 100 companies, and I know one's gonna hit. I don't think that's the, the mentality. Oh, and I, I hope the ecosystem gets that from the association level to the platforms, to all of the enthusiasts. There are no experts. They're only enthusiasts right now. I think that's the fundamental opportunity that we have. Yeah, I can say that, you know, I mean, you guys are doing this tirelessly. You go to a lot of events, Joseph and Jeff and Patricia, Roy, Peter. And, you know, all of us, we have this passion about, I mean, we are in different aspect of this crowd, you know, finance or crowdfunding, but it's all about community. We're passionate, not just because the money, Michael, you know, and uh, Billy over there with, the, and it's all success stories happening with this social media and other things over there. But it's all, and I, and I, and I love that. You know, I mean, that's that's drive me. You know, hearing somebody like you, and you know, uh, talking about you know, giving back to community. Don't let the kids go. Just go to the Silicon Valley. We can keep them here. We can just you know, kind of take them to the next level. That's what you did with, you know, Bohemian guitar. But I see all this passion. You know, I mean, that's what. 
you know, we come all the way from West Coast, East Coast, New York, different places, everywhere that I go. And we share this passion, you know, and that, that's amazing. And not only here, I mean, I go to England and on different places, and Canada is just way over there. And that shows that how powerful this crowdfunding is, how much helps to the community, how much helps to that uh, particular you know, brand that, you know, wanna just, they just want to start. And those Bohemians, what would they have? They didn't have anything. They just had some idea to putting you no know, nice, beautiful guitar on the on the and the oil can, you know, which is you know uh, olive oil can, wasn't it? Is it the uh, olive oil? Originally, they start with old petroleum oil cans, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and it sounds great. I mean, now they're lunch everywhere. Boxes actually too. Yeah, and, and other stories of it that we all very passionate about. But it goes back, you know, that how crowdfunding work. And I always, when I go to the event like you guys over here, and I talk to people, you know, people that, you know, we're in the middle of the expert here and, and among ourselves, but I always come up with this thing and say that uh, we have a, you know, African-American president in this country because of the crowdfunding. Because there was $50 donation, under, under $100 million, $50 fund day, with, you know, a donation that we contributed to the, the President Obama campaign, so, so we have we done is very powerful in community, is very powerful in politics, is very powerful for minorities, is very powerful for women. Is so it's it, it is, you know, so we all have come together and kind of get this thing and kind of guard this industry. So it's very, very interesting, you know, to see that. And we have we have Dr. Swart, you know, we have people in academic world, you know, that they are basically embrace that. They give, you know, basic basically legitimacy to this, uh, you know, uh, what we do over here. So it's all academic, world banks are doing this thing. So it's very, very interesting over that. I want to give you, start with the, your final thought, then we're going to wrap up here. And uh, for, uh, I know you said, what do you think about over there? But um, uh, I just want to have your last, you have the chance. I'm not going to question, what, what is your last uh, statement? Yeah, last, last world, world. not last world today. <laughs> I know you do it. You know, tell us about tell us about your radio, your TV show. Then tell us about what you, how many audiences. What is it on what what the website is? Yes, uh, Right Place TV. W R I G H T Place TV dot com. You can watch it online. But we are nationally syndicated to Dish on Demand. The show is about fourteen years old, and Correct. I was doing this before everybody. You know, Mama had a show on <laughs> on uh, in, on entrepreneurs and on YouTube and all of that. Um, and I've always been on broadcast TV, and uh, the last five years I've been making a big push for internet television also. I interview entrepreneurs and talk about how to move their business forward. I'm enamored with crowdfunding, as people can see, and so I'm starting to pull those experts in there. Um, your platform, I don't know if you got my email. I think you didn't get my email because you got an invite. So I always talk to platform owners about crowdfunding and bring on different experts. And so we're, we're doing that. And uh, Right Place TV has been awesome. It has been, you know, my bread and butter for about 14 years now. And very excited. So my last words will be what I always say on my show. Ignoring one's conscience is neither safe nor right. Good. Well said. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can you follow that? Last words to live by. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go get ready for the, you know, party here. No. It had been a long day. <laughs> no, my last word, Sydney, I appreciate this conference and everything that you put into it. So I just want to say thank you for having us all here. And I think it's been a great day uh, overall. Um, I don't really have any last words except thank you for having us. And looking forward to the future. Carl, thanks very much. Yep. Peter, what are we going to be? What is your last word? You know, usually the, the councils, they have the one of those, you know, closing statements. So this what is, is this? Uh, yeah, You're ready for tough that. Tough act to follow, and I know there's a cocktail party following <laughs> my statement, so I have to be careful what I say uh, not make it too long. But no, uh, I, I'll say this. I, I really think that at least in my world, in my segment, entertainment, crowdfunding has not reached critical mass in terms of knowledge, and I'm, I'm sure it's like that in other verticals. And I, I just think that we're close. I mean, I think it's, it's going to hit critical mass in the next year. And I think there's going to be uh, a, a huge disruption and game change in, in film funding. Yep, uh, I, I completely agree with that. I mean, I think, you know, um, the, the expected and feared by many regulators land rush into this area is not what happened. What you will see in the experience from other countries is this, this, this takes time to grow. You have to meet the consumers where they are. And then you have to lead them to what's next. You can't put what's next out there and just simply expect that overnight everybody's going to adopt it. You have to meet consumers where they are, and then you have to lead them to what's next. And I do believe that 
crowdfunding is is next. And I think you know if we can meet the consumers where we are, we're going to be able to lead them to that place. What else is there still to say? Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're all here to learn. I mean, uh, at least I am, and uh, I'm, I'm meeting so many interesting people here. And, and uh, you know, this enthusiasm that you that you spoke to earlier is is what really excites me. I always tell people, I don't know what it's going to be like in five years, but the genie is out of the bottle. It's not going back in, and and it's going to be great. Thank you for the opportunity to serve. I'm glad everything worked out. Um, I solicit your prayers <laughs> because uh, we're about to, um, or goodwill, because we are embarking upon um, hopefully what will be the largest closed raise for uh, equity for the general public. Um, we want to make Bohemian Guitars proud <laughs> because they set the way, and of course with the spark market. And um, you know, follow our progress. We launch next Friday officially. And um, so we, you know, have been a champion for the act, you know, an advocate or educator, and now we're going to become a user um, as well. Uh, if you are in the state of Georgia, I definitely encourage you to look at SparkMarket.com when we launch. Um, on social media, 500 founders, hashtag 500 founders will be, um, you know, our kind of hashtag for this campaign. And you know, we're just gonna, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna build an ecosystem, and we believe that now's the time to establish that precedent. Now, I'll leave you with this. Um, I used to say this at all, in all of my talks. So, um, a mind without barriers creates ideas without limitations. We should say that, um, of course, that this is gonna be only in the state of Georgia, that the platform you're the referring to. Absolutely, the, the equity yeah. part will be using Georgia's Invest Georgia exemption, so okay. you can only buy shares if you are a Georgia resident or entity. We will offer perks mm -hmm. for any and everyone that wants to support the ecosystem that we're building um, nationwide. But equity uh, will be uh, 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 Georgia residents only. So there's still time for you to relocate <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you want to be a part of it. Right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you being Thank here. You. and. Just want to say for the audience at home, uh, it's been a great day here at Atlanta, Georgia, at the uh, Cobb Gallery. We had a great expert, and I learned a lot. This video of this broadcast is going to be in the crowdfund beat. We have a second day. We are going to talk about, as Jeff mentioned, with uh, Megan and other people and some of the you know, uh, uh, Georgia locals that we're going to talk, and also North Carolina. We're going to have uh, Mark Isley, which is one of the... So we're going to have a great day tomorrow. It's a half a day. So. Uh, we're going to talk about more about the interest state. We're going to have a workshop, but this has been a very, very good day for us here in Atlanta, Georgia. We see uh, good things are going to happen, hopefully. And uh, this is Sydney Armani with a crowdfund beat saying so long. Thank, Thank you. you.